includes topical questions. We'll now move on to our next item of business, which is a statement by the Cabinet Secretary Michael Matheson on policing 2026. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement, and uh, if members wish to ask a question, I would encourage them to press their button as soon as they can. And I call on Michael Matheson to deliver the statement. Thank you, uh, President Officer. When the uh, Scottish Police Authority and Police Scotland launched the consultation on their 10-year policing 2026 strategy, I committed to update Parliament following the consultation and once the revised 10-year strategy had been submitted to me for approval. The final strategy was laid before this Parliament earlier today. This is the first time a 10-year strategy has been developed for policing in Scotland. It was finalised following wide-ranging consultation and engagement, which was demonstrated, which has demonstrated strong support for the key elements of the strategy. I'm happy to endorse the vision set out in Policing 2026. The merger of 10 police organisations into a single police service has not been without its challenges, but through commitment and professionalism of officers and staff, much has been achieved. Savings have been realised, allowing resources to be focused on service delivery. Public confidence in the police remains strong and recorded crime is at a 42-year low. HMICS Derek Penman recognised in his last annual report that Police Scotland is better prepared than legacy forces to meet the operational challenges ahead. The last few weeks have underlined the change in nature of the threat which we ask our police service to address. We experienced a global cyber attack on the 21st of May and we have seen cowardly terrorist attacks on the streets of London and on children and young people at a pop concert in Manchester. Police forces and their emergency services colleagues across the UK respond heroically in the face of these attacks and we all appreciate their work. A single police service has strengthened access across Scotland's communities to specialist policing capabilities, including firearm capabilities. This, coupled with the decision to increase the number of firearmed officers in Scotland, has ensured that Scotland is well prepared to respond. Over the last few weeks, Police Scotland has provided assurances that they are fully supported to lead our fight against terrorism. However, we will continue to keep this under constant review. It is by interacting with communities and being trusted by them that we will prevent further attacks from taking place. I welcome the emphasis in the strategy on strengthening Police Scotland's cyber capability and capacity, including recruiting more civilian cyber specialists to counter the threat posed by cyber attacks like the one we saw in May. The strategic policing priorities capture the public's expectation of our police service. To deliver on these expectations, the strategy focuses on five key areas, protection, prevention, communities, knowledge and innovation. Police Scotland is a national service, but policing is delivered locally. I welcome the strategy's commitment to building on Police Scotland's already strong community relations. I believe it is those strong community links and the increase in frontline policing capacity to be delivered by the strategy, which will further improve public confidence in the police. The strategy also recognises that demands in policing are increasingly focused towards addressing issues of vulnerability. Police Scotland is one of the first police services in the UK to implement mandatory mental health and suicide intervention training for all officers up to and including the rank of inspector. As part of 2026 implementation, Police Scotland will change how vulnerability is assessed at first contact and beyond, enabling the police service 
and its partners to respond in a way that best meets the needs of vulnerable service users. This complements the ambition in the Scottish Government's 10-year mental health strategy. We have committed to increasing the mental health workforce in key areas, including working within Police Scotland, with £35 million of additional investment over the next five years for 800 extra workers. These are the commitments of a government and police service which sees the police as a vital, trusted and reassuring cornerstone of our society. I welcome Police Scotland's commitment to maintaining officer numbers in 2017-18 for the seventh year in a row since we met our target of 1,000 extra police officers in 2011. In policing 2026, the Chief Constable has made his assessment of the shape of the workforce and the skills needed to meet future demands. He proposes a workforce model that will increase operational policing capacity and capability by freeing up officers from support work and recruiting more expert police staff to tackle new threats such as online fraud and cyber attacks. His conclusion is that this will allow Police Scotland to slow the recruitment of police officers in the longer term, whilst continuing to improve this service to the public and building the capability and flexibility needed to res respond to our changing society. However, I'm absolutely clear that no decision must be taken to slow police officer recruitment until there is evidence that the planned increase in operational policing capacity has been delivered. I have asked HMICS Derek Penman to work with the Scottish Police Authority and Police Scotland to develop a robust methodology to supply this evidence and to provide strong scrutiny and assurance around delivery of increased operational capacity. Police Scotland and the SPA must demonstrate that additional capacity is being delivered before police officer recruitment is slowed. The Chief Constable will continue to review Police Scotland's capacity and capability in the context of any new and emerging threats. The plans Police Scotland have set out up to 2019-2020 show the number of police officers will remain well above the number we inherited in 2007, something I remain strongly committed to. Any proposals beyond three years must be subject to full consultation when Police Scotland refreshes its strategy for 2020 onwards. Policing 2026 is clear. It's clear that the SPA and Police Scotland are working to a three-year plan to deliver financial sustainability. To support Police Scotland's work, this government has committed to protecting the police resource budget in real terms in every year of this parliament, a boost of £100 million by 2021. We have committed a further £61 million in 2017-18 to support the delivery of Policing 2026. And I continue to press the UK Government to address the glaring VAT disparity which has already cost Scotland's police and fire services £140 million and could increase to a total of £280 million by the end of the current parliamentary session. The 2026 programme is ambitious and challenging. Clear governance and the effectiveness of the SPA in supporting and holding Police Scotland to account for delivery will be crucial to its success. Decision making must be open and transparent, with service improvement driven through collaboration with partners, communities, officers and staff. As Cabinet Secretary for Justice, I will take a close interest in how the strategy is being delivered. Over the next couple of months, I expect the Scottish Police Authority and Police Scotland to develop robust implementation and financial plans. 
which demonstrate how they will work towards a sustainable and effective service that delivers the ambitions in policing 2026. I also know that the public and Parliament expect strong governance and accountability in policing, and the SPA and HMICS must work together to play a vital role in oversight of implementation, particularly on providing additional assurance that the increase in operational capacity is being delivered and that it is delivering improvements. President Officer, I want to end by talking about the police officers and staff all over Scotland who protect us all. We ask many of these men and women to do things and take risks which few of us have the courage to do. This strategy is focused on making their jobs more rewarding to allow them to better use their time protecting the public and to strengthening our communities. Police Scotland and the SPA must work hand in hand with their workforce and their representatives to support and energise them to realise this change. Thank you. I would encourage members who wish to ask a question and who haven't already done so to press their request to seat buttons. And I call on Margaret Mitchell. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I thank the Cabinet Secretary for early sight of his statement. The police are the service of first and last resort, yet page 22 of the Policing 2026 strategy states, crime figures are not an accurate measure of demand. Only one in five incidents attended by the police result in the crime being recorded. Considering recorded crime in isolation is therefore not an accurate measure of demand on policing services. What is the Cabinet Secretary doing to ensure more accurate recording of the demands on police time? And how can the, the level of police numbers required to cope with this demand be decided without this accurate data? And finally, can the Cabinet Secretary outline what the impact of the Field I-6 project will have on the 2026 strategy? Cabinet Secretary. On the member's latter point, the uh, I-6 project predated uh, 2026, so it's already been taken into account uh, with the new strategy. Uh, an issue of uh, uh, demand, um, the member will recognise that recorded crime uh, only demonstrates those crimes which have actually been recorded. Uh, of the almost 3 million calls that Police Scotland receive each year, around 80% of them do not relate to crime. A large amount of them deal with issues such as vulnerability. So as is set out in 2026, is that Police Scotland intend to change the way in which they assess vulnerability with the introduction of Thrive, a system that more effectively assesses an individual's vulnerability to ensure that they then receive an appropriate response to their particular needs. And that is a reflection of the changing demand which our police service now faces and why the Chief Constable believes that he needs to adapt the workforce in order to reflect that, including the demand which they do have for different types of crime. So, for example, the increasing number of cases which they have relating to cybercrime, requiring the skill sets within the organisation to effectively deal with these issues. And as a member will be aware, as I just said in my statement, about the additional resources we're providing on mental health, some of which will go to Police Scotland. Having mental health staff based in their contact command and control centres able to support staff on the ground when they're dealing with an individual to ensure that they get the most appropriate response. So the member raises a very important issue about demand on the service, which just exactly highlights the reason why we need to adapt the workforce that we now have within Police Scotland to make sure we've got the necessary skills in there to support the police in the job they're doing, and also the systems in place that help them to meet the needs of individuals who do present as being vulnerable. And that's exactly what's at the heart of the 2026 strategy. Claire Baker, to be followed by Rona Mackay. Claire Baker. Um, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for an advanced copy of the statement. It is disappointing that the Cabinet Secretary has not made time for a statement about the SPA. It is not possible to deliver this ambitious strategy for policing without a functioning SPA which commands public confidence. And it is vital this situation is resolved. I welcome the publication of the strategy and I want to thank the dedicated officers and staff who serve our police force across the country. 
In order to achieve transformation, Police Scotland must plug the black hole that is at the heart of its financial budget. Is the Cabinet Secretary confident that this strategy will achieve this, or will we be faced with another critical Audit Scotland report? Many of the difficulties experienced by Police Scotland sit at the door of an SNP government that ties itself to a policy of extra police officers, a policy that it doesn't properly fund, which has led to support staff being cut and officers backfilling roles. The Chief Constable has presented a plan to address this. The Cabinet Secretary says that no decision will be taken regarding recruitment unless there is planned increase in operational policing capacity. Considering the financial difficulties that are facing the police, how does he expect this to be possible? Cabinet Secretary. Sign officer, um, the member raises an important issue around uh, transformation uh, and uh, a key part of uh, what's at the very heart of uh, 2026 is the transformation of Police Scotland in particular, its corporate functions to ensure that they are more effectively supporting frontline uh, police officers. Uh, that's been one of the real challenges uh, with the amalgamation of eight forces into one and ensuring that we have single systems operating right across uh, the country. And that's the very reason why we've increased the funding this year to £61 million in the police reform budget in order to support that transformational work. That transformational work, as a member will see in the strategy, is about releasing that additional capacity that's presently held up within the corporate side of the organisation to free that up in order to focus much more on frontline resources. And the way in which it's configured at the present time is holding up resources that could be better deployed into other parts of the organisation. So that's at the very heart of the strategy. But the strategy sets out that broader approach that Police Scotland will be taking forward. And as I mentioned in my statement, the SPA, uh, along with Police Scotland, will now be taking forward uh, engagement with key stakeholders on implementation plan and also on the financial plan that goes al alongside the 2026 its strategy. They will be absolutely key in making sure that what's set out in the strategy is delivered and that it is achieved. And that's exactly why they're working to a three-year programme which is about delivering financial sustainability and transformation within the organisation. And over the coming months, the financial plan and the implementation plan will allow key stakeholders to express their view on how they're going to go about achieving that over the next three years. Rona Mackay to be followed by Oliver Mundell. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that Police Scotland must be able to adapt as they see necessary to the changing nature of crime that they face in today's world? Cabinet Secretary. Presiding Officer, no member in this chamber will uh, be in any doubt about the changing nature of the crime that our police service is facing. Uh, the increasing threat of cyber crime, online fraud, etc. All of these types of challenges, the recent incidents we've had as well, uh, with the uh, terrorist attacks in London and in Manchester. And it's absolutely crucial we ensure that Police Scotland have the resources, capacity and capability to meet these challenges head on. That's exactly why 2026 has been taken forward. The first time we've had a 10-year strategy for policing in Scotland. It is challenging to imagine what it will be like in uh, 10 years' time. But nevertheless, uh, what we can do is make sure we're building on the key strengths that we already have within Police Scotland to ensure that we can meet those existing, new and emerging threats as they develop in the months and years ahead. Oliver Mundell, followed by Stuart Stevenson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I, I for one, uh, welcome the Cabinet Secretary's assurances on police numbers. Um, and I hope uh, that he will agree with me that in rural communities, there is a baseline uh, level of officers that's required to ensure uh, safe coverage and provision, and that it shouldn't just be based on the number of crimes committed. And I hope that as we look to build capacity, we wouldn't see a disproportionate drop in officer numbers in rural communities. Cabinet Secretary. And also, I recognise the important issue which the member is raising, although he will recognise that it is an operational matter for the Chief Constable to determine uh, the level of policing that is delivered within any particular command area, working in conjunction uh, with local commanders. Uh, but the member does raise an important issue. So, for example, in large geographical areas that can take an extended period of time for officers to be able to respond to an incident uh, which can uh, stretch their capacity. And it's important that the 
model which is used by the police service recognises some of those challenges within our rural areas. Uh, the member may be interested to note if he compares the draft strategy with that of the finalised strategy, one of the key areas which has been addressed within it is the rural aspect of policing in order to make sure that that continues to be strengthened and it continues to be a key part of the 2026 programme of work. Stuart Stevenson to be followed by John Finney. Stuart Stevenson. Uh, let me draw members' attention to uh, the fact that I have a close family member who is a police constable. Um, is the Minister aware that Section 41 of the Value Added Tax uh, Act 1994 uh, empowers the Treasury, and I quote, where VAT is chargeable in the supply of goods or services to a government department, direct the Commissioner's refund VAT? And in particular, that on the 1st of April 2015 in England, uh, such a direction was made to allow the Highways Agency to retrieve its VAT. And indeed, the introduction of academy schools has led to a similar effect. Is it not time the Treasury was fair to Scottish interests and allowed us in the police force to regain the VAT that we have paid? Cabinet Secretary. And also the member raises an important point because as I mentioned in my statement, the cost of not being able to reclaim VAT for our police and fire service in Scotland so far has been £140 million. By the end of uh, this parliament, it could be almost double that figure. I know that uh, there are many in this chamber who will say that we were warned of this at the time when we created uh, Police Scotland. Uh, and I wouldn't reject that particular argument. However, what I do reject is the idea that the Treasury don't have the power to give VAT exemption or their ability to reclaim VAT to Police Scotland and to the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service. As the member himself has just made reference to, and as I've made reference to on a number of occasions in this chamber, where it has suited the Treasury to allow a national organisation to reclaim VAT, they have allowed it to do so. But for some reason, when it comes to Scotland's key emergency services, services the Conservative Party refused to do so. What will be telling? is whether their new MPs in Westminster will continue to vote against our police service and fire service up here being allowed to reclaim that fact. It's unacceptable and it's about time people on the Conservative benches started standing up for our police service and our fire service here in Scotland. John Finney to be followed by Lee MacArthur. John Finney. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Uh, Cabinet Secretary, will you maybe help me understand the, the relationship between operational policing and political control? Quite rightly in your statement, and I thank you for early sight of it, you talk about asking the HMI CS to work with SPA and Police Scotland to develop a robust methodology to supply this evidence and provide strong scrutiny and assurance around delivery of increased operational capacity. You also talk about expectations about the development of implementation plans. Uh, you also mentioned there's a sufficiency of resource, but you will keep under constant review. What is the mechanism for this chamber, for parliamentarians, to uh, shape policy around the deployment of armed officers? And in particularly, how can we shape a situation where any de-escalation of threat out there is mirrored by a removal of firearms from police officers and a return of them to the armoury? Cabinet Secretary. So, officer, as a member will recognise, the decision around the deployment of firearms officers is an operational matter for the Chief Constable. Um, I uh, 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 made a statement in this Parliament last year about increasing the firearms capability within Police Scotland because it would breach the 2% threshold that had previously been given as an undertaking by uh, the previous Chief Constable that should the number of firearms officers increase to beyond that of 2% of uh, the force that then he would uh, raise this matter as a matter for Parliament and for Government to uh, consider. And the increase last year would take us beyond that 2% figure, hence why I made that statement uh, last year. Any change in the deployment of those issues, if the member will recall during my statement, I was very clear that any decision to change the mode in which they were being deployed would also be a matter that would require wide consultation within Scotland with key stakeholders with government and also with this parliament. Does the member will recognise at the present moment firearms officers are used for firearms incidents or where there is a threat to life. If that was to change, then that's an issue that would have to be considered through an open consultation engagement programme with Police Scotland and with key stakeholders, including this parliament and the government, so that we have an opportunity to express our views on that matter. I am conscious that there are those who are pressing for change in this area 
for a number of reasons. And if there is to be a debate on that matter, then it should be a debate that everyone has got an opportunity to express their view in. Thank you. I'll try and squeeze some more speakers in if we can try and be as brief as possible. Liam MacArthur. Thank you, President Officer. Can I thank him for early sight of the statement and also put on record my thanks to the officers and staff for the work that they do. The police consistently tell us that mental health issues are one of the biggest challenges they face. Given that we're expecting additional mental health staff to be shared across A&E, prisons, GP surgeries, of which there are around 1,000, and the police, how many of the 800 uh, members of additional staff, me mental health staff referred to by the Cabinet Secretary are expected to be placed with the national force? What will their role or roles be uh, and when will they become available? Cabinet Secretary. Then also the member um, recognises that the issue of mental health is a significant issue for the police service and the demand that it then faces as a result of uh, calls to uh, the police service. There was a pilot uh, uh, run in uh, Glasgow with NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde, uh, which allowed officers out with uh, normal uh, times to be able to use the mental health uh, uh, out of hours service, which allowed them to contact them in order to engage with mental health workers to get advice for them, in order to, uh, when they were working with an individual who had come into contact with the police, with a view to reducing the number of individuals who come into custody. Uh, the results of that pilot were very successful, and that continues to be rolled forward within the Glasgow area and they're looking to take it into the uh, uh, Lothians area as uh, well. What I can say to the member is that that didn't require mental health workers to be deployed with the police. It was about reusing the existing arrangements much more effectively in order to address these types of issues. But what we are looking at is having the deployment of mental health workers within the contact command and control centres. So that they're there able to advise, ad advise uh, those who are taking the call and also the uh, those who are, uh, who are deploying resources and also to communicate directly with staff on, and officers on the ground to give them advice and to also make links to other external agencies as and when that will be appropriate. The numbers of that are, of them are still to be finalised, uh, but the idea is to try and reduce the need for these individuals to end up in custody in the first place. So that making sure that that resource is deployed on the right side of the gate before someone ends up in custody. So that will be about deploying staff into the contact command and control centres, but it may also be at custody centres where individuals do uh, come into custody. But the exact scale and nature of that has still to be determined, but there's a clear determination to make sure it happens because we know from the pilot in Glasgow it works very effectively in reducing the need for individuals with mental health problems coming into custody. Thank you. John Mason, followed by Monica Lennon. Uh, thank you. I mean, local uh, relationships between the local community and the local police are extremely important to my constituents and I think to others, uh, and especially if there can be continuity uh, with the police. Uh, does the Cabinet Secretary feel that this new strategy will impact on these local relationships? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Sign officer, uh, local policing is absolutely key to the success of uh, policing overall. Even the uh, very sophisticated uh, uh, capabilities that Police Scotland have around dealing with uh, major issues such as terrorism. Absolutely key to helping to prevent these types of things from happening in the first place is about having strong, resilient communities which are cohesive and at the same time having police that are trusted and part of those uh, communities. And that is absolutely at the heart of the 2026 strategy. Local policing will be strengthened as a result of the strategy. It's about improving its capacity and its capability to do that type of engagement work. And that will help to ensure that the very strong links that they have with communities at the present, at the present stage are built on and developed yet further in the future. And we can see that from the SPA's annual review that local authorities are feeding back that there are very strong partnerships already in existence in 2026. It's about building on that and making sure that local policing is at the very heart of our policing model in Scotland. Monica Lennon to be followed by Gordon Lindhurst. Thank you. Echoing John Mason's question, I welcome the commitment underpinning the strategy which emphasises the importance of strong community policing. However, the statement today has made no mention of the ongoing estates review and the role of police stations across the country. I know that the future of local stations in Hamilton, Larkhall and Shots in my own region are all under scrutiny. Without a firm commitment that local police stations won't be subject to closure, how can we be sure, Cabinet Secretary, that strong community policing will continue to be delivered into 2026? Cabinet Secretary. Sign officer, as I've mentioned in this chamber before, the police estate that we have in Scotland has developed over the course of the last 100 years, and we need to make sure that it's fit for purpose 
and that it is in the right place in order to help to support the delivery of local policing. And as a member may be aware, in many areas where they're reviewing their existing estate, it is with a view to either staying in that facility by bringing in other partners to support them, or moving to another facility within that local area to work in partnership with other agencies, which is absolutely key, again, to making sure we're delivering effective local uh, policing. So what is important here is to make sure we have those effective partnerships, and that's a key part of the estate strategy. And as I've also made clear in this chamber as well, is that local commanders will have a key say in exactly determining which of the estate uh, has to be changed and which areas of the state have to be changed. Whether there's a decision made on any local uh, police stations, it will be a matter for the local commander, then referring that through their own chain of command, which will then be considered with oversight within the SPA. So that partnership is absolutely key, and it's at the very heart of the 2026 strategy. And that's why part of the state's review is about building on that and making sure where those effective partnerships that deliver better outcomes for local communities are being taken forward to deliver the very important local policing that the member referred to. Gordon Linder is to be followed of time by Fulton McGregor. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary has referred to the unfortunate necessity to put more resources into fighting against terrorism, questions of cybercrime, which equally bring with them their own administrative work and challenges for the police force. We have the increase in violent crime recently in Scotland as well. Um, it's not just local communities, but uh, sorry, rural communities, but also cities like Edinburgh, in which people are concerned about police response times. Um, how can local people be assured that sufficient resources are available to the police so that they can uh, sleep in their beds at home at night safely, in a way that many of them at the minute are concerned they cannot? Cabinet yeah, Secretary. Uh, sign officer, um, if there's an issue within a particular command area, the member should take it up directly with uh, the local commander uh, if it relates to uh, response times to a particular uh, instance. But um, as this uh, government has shown uh, in our commitment to policing, over the course of this next parliamentary term, we'll be giving uh, real terms protection to the police budget, allowing us to invest an extra £100 million into uh, the police service. And alongside that, uh, the additional monies which are providing of £61 million in the police reform budget this year to help to support that important work that's been set out within 2026 about improving their capability and their capacity. Because that's absolutely key in the strategy as the Chief Constable set out. This is about improving their operational capability, capacity in order to meet the needs of local communities to reflect on the changing demand which they're facing, to work with other partners to manage that demand much more effectively that ends up coming to the police that actually should be met, with, met by another organisation or another service, um, but to make sure that we are releasing that capacity to be able to deal with policing matters much more effectively. So these issues are at the very heart of the strategy, but if the member's got a particular concern about response times uh, within his own uh, constituency area, I would encourage him to discuss that with the local commander in order to look at how that can be better addressed. And very briefly indeed, Fulton, Mac Fulton McGregor. Thank you, President Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary provide details on how police numbers in Scotland compare to police officer numbers in England and Wales? Cabinet Secretary. Well, President Officer, um, uh, unlike uh, has been a picture in England and Wales since 2007, uh, police numbers in Scotland have been increasing, unlike in England and Wales, where they've decreased by almost 20,000. Um, we believe that policing is a key part to helping to support our communities and in keeping them safe. And as a government, we will continue to take forward policies that ensure that we deliver upon that. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. Apologies to members who couldn't get in. Uh, and uh, we will now move on to the next item of business. We'll just take a few moments for members to change seats.